You can watch the best parts of this series at MedCircle.com. We first sat down with Encina in 2018 to discuss what it's like to live with dissociative identity disorder, but we didn't get the full picture. In this series, we flesh out Encina's full mental health journey. Welcome to the Med Circle original series, Encina Severa, living with co-occurring disorders. You're back. How is Minnie? Amazing. Good. How As are always. you? Oh, struggling actually. You're struggling and we're, yeah. we are going to talk about that. Yeah. If you're unaware who Minnie is, Minnie is one of Encina's alters and uh, we were fortunate enough, I was fortunate enough, to talk to Minnie directly and have a beautiful interaction. And if you haven't seen that video, you can definitely go watch it. I highly recommend you watch that first before watching this. My first question for you is what was the reaction like when we posted that video and it blew up? Honestly, like I'm, I'm used to getting a lot of messages and stuff, you know, cause of my modeling or other things that I do, but I had such a big new following from mm. people, um, that wanted to know like everything about it. And like any question that they had that like, I wasn't able to answer on the video, they asked through messaging and stuff. And I was doing my best to, you know, answer people that I could. And, but I kind of. I got a little overflowed. <laughs> was it overwhelming? So, uh, it could be at times because a lot of the questions were really like stuff that they were going through. Um, but also like a lot of those things kind of compared to what I've been going through. And I'm like, I wish I could be there for you, but I'm like trying to be there for myself right yes. now. Yes. So I will say that the number one message I get, mm -hmm the most popular message I get is about you in that video. And when we filmed that video and posted it, there was a part of me that felt, are people going to receive mm -hmm. you and Cena, Minnie in a, in a positive light? Or is it going to be something that the internet, which is known for being a really tumultuous place yeah. at times, <laughs> are they going to receive it in a negative light? And I only ever received, and out of the hundreds and hundreds of messages I got, I'm sure you got more than me, only ever received you and Minnie in a positive light. Yeah. Talking about your bravery, they want your phone number, they want your email, they want to reach out to you, they're like, please, we, we need Encina. And I, it made me feel so good about mm -hmm. the interview because of all the positivity that came out of it on my end. Yeah. Do you feel that it was a positive experience on your end? It was, um, it was a really, really good, experience in general, because I've always been very open about my life. Mm -hmm. um, like I'm, when it comes to myself, I've, I'm an open book. You know, if I'm struggling with something or something's going on, like in the Facebook days for me, like I don't have Facebook anymore, but mm -hmm. um, I would post about it. And I, you know, just so I could be there for other people. Yeah. And I've always considered myself a mental health advocate. Yeah. So being able to do that video was really, really like, deep for me. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was, I could feel that. Yeah. I felt that it was deep for you. What do you think the number one question I got was from people? <laughs> Something about my hair. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know what, that's probably a close number two. The, the number one question I got, and this was in person because the only time I've ever been recognized, mm -hmm. uh, f for med circle videos is with you. Hmm. When I'm out and about, they go, are you the guy that interviewed the girl with <laughs> multiple personalities? I go, yeah. The, the number one question was. I actually, I, I actually have a lot of people who stop me on the, like on the streets or stop me and they're like, are you that girl that has DID? Like, like and what do you say to them? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And what, what, what do they ask Usually you? they're, they're like, oh, I saw your interview on med circle and it yeah. was so inspiring. And they're like. They get excited about it and stuff. That's so. good. Well, so. and you're easy to find in a crowd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's Encina. <laughs> so the number one question I would get is, do you think she was faking it? Mm. And it didn't come, they weren't mean about it. Yeah. They were like, what do you, like, do you think she was faking turning into Minnie? Mm -hmm. And my response was, and I'm glad I can say this now publicly, that not for a moment did I feel Mm -hmm. I was talking to a grown woman pretending to be a three-year-old. Yeah. I felt like I was talking to a three-year-old. Mm -hmm. And I think it showed because I don't know how to talk to three-year-olds. Yeah. I'm like, uh, <laughs> how are you? You know, like, what colors do you like? So that was the number one. Did you get any people who came to you and said, you're a faker, you're an actor? 
Um, I didn't get anybody that came to me like directly. Uh, I only got positive reactions, honestly. Yeah. But when I went through, I was trying to, in the beginning, I was trying to like go through the YouTube comments and mm -hmm. stuff and mm -hmm. like answer as many as I could and be active that way. Um, and there was a lot of negativity there. Um, so I was just like, ah, I'm gonna just step away from this yeah. and like kind of just let it be, it's do its thing. Um, it also just, there was so many. <laughs> yeah. So totally. how many messages do you think you get a in a week or a day or a month? Uh, I get at least 20 a day. At every least. Day. Every day. Right now you still. Even now. Yeah. Um, I, I get, and just specifically about the DID, not about, um, like, I mean, there's other messages about like, you know, whatever. other things that I post, you know, whatever, yeah. but it's majority. It is about, you know, med circle and DID wow. right now. So, yeah. Why do you think people are so fascinated by this? I think it's because it's not talked about mm -hmm. very much. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are like, I've never even heard about this. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, people have watched movies like, you know, again, the Hollywood hype of like mm -hmm. DID being scary and stuff like, they watch these movies and they don't even know that that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. They're like, I've watched Jekyll and Hyde and I didn't know that that was considered like a, a DIG type of thing. So I think it's just not talked about. In our one hour interview, mm -hmm. I'm assuming you watched the interview. Yeah. I cried my eyes out when I watched many. Really? Yeah. It's just, whew. yeah. What about it? Just seeing her on camera and seeing like how brave she is. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Um, it was a good thing. It mm. was a good thing. Had you seen her before in that way? Yeah, I've, I've like we've filmed many like day to day, uh -huh. you know. But yeah. this was something that was just so much more important to me. Yeah. Yeah. Even though you're crying right now, it makes me happy. <laughs> it's, it's a good cry. <laughs> yeah, it's a good cry. It's a good cry. Because you get to see that. Yeah. And, and you just reminded me of something else. I actually showed it to a doctor, mm -hmm. a psychiatrist, because uh, I, I had explained that one of our videos was a woman who had DID. And she said, well, that's very rare. And I said, mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, she goes, the, the chances of you actually having someone with DID are, are rare. I said, okay. And I said, would you watch the video? Mm -hmm. She said, sure. Show her the video. Uh, and we showed her a little bit of your story and then showed her the, uh, the actual transition to mm -hmm. Minnie. And she goes, that looks real to me. And so I think there was validity. And the reason I'm sharing that is for the mm -hmm. people who believe that you're faking it or acting or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I believed it was real experiencing it. Mm -hmm. And you know, a psychiatrist also looked at that and she obviously didn't diagnose you because yeah. she never met you, but she said that seems real and not fake. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was there anything when you watched it that you got, mm, I didn't like that? Um, I mean, I, I kind of sometimes have a hard time like finding the right words. Mm. So even, even like right now, like I feel like I like kind of stumble over words or mm -hmm. I'll have like longer than normal pauses. Mm. Um, but other, otherwise I, I did the best I could and I answered as honestly and openly and as informative as I could. Gosh, and that's, see, that's see, all I, I can do. I think you explain things so great. Thank you. It was so <laughs> clear and simple and everybody loved your car metaphor. Oh, I, I'm, that makes me really happy because like, it's so hard to explain. And I was like, yeah. how else could I explain this? It yeah. just makes sense. If you haven't watched that first episode, of Encina talking about her DID, please do. But here is a clip of her using the car, a car as a metaphor on what it's like to have DID. Take a look. Um, one description that I, I could tell you maybe, uh, think of this, think of your body as a car. Okay, you're driving your car. You're in the front seat and you're doing your thing. So I'm driving my body, mm -hmm. you know. Imagine someone takes you out and throws you in the back seat. Now they're driving, you're in the back seat though. You can fight for control of the car or the body. Uh, you might not always win that fight. Um, you can see what's happening just like you can. You can see in the car, you're just sitting in the back seat. You can hear what's happening or what's being said. Um, so that's kind of like as if 
many had come out, but she was holding my hand. So I can still see, I'm mm -hmm. co-conscious. Mm -hmm. Say someone stuck a bag over my head, threw me in the back seat. Now I can't see where the body or the car is going. I can't see where I'm going. I can't see what's happening. I can hear though. So it's kind of like a wall has been placed in front of my eyes. Um, and that's another way of being co-conscious to a point, but I can't see, mm -hmm. I can hear. Mm -hmm. So since the filming, mm -hmm. have you transitioned any, into any of your alters? Uh, lately I have, I've been going through like a really stressful time and stuff. So I've had a little bit more, mm -hmm. um, but it's still, I feel like I've gotten a pretty good like handle on it like lately um, mm -hmm. or in general now, uh, rather than when I first started having like the symptoms from it and stuff. It was very hectic, um, but it's, it's under control. It's not like crazy or anything. And mm -hmm. like people ask like, well, can she work, you know, mm -hmm. with this? And, you know, to answer, yes, I can work. Um, at the moment I'm not, mm -hmm. but with DID in general, yeah, I can work. We're going to go through more about DID and you mm -hmm. in this series. We're going to talk about your other uh, mental health challenges that you have. Um, do you want to briefly go through some other diagnosis that you have that we'll talk about today? So I've been diagnosed with, uh, God, it, it's, it's hard to like list them all off because I feel like there's so many. Uh, so with DID often comes uh, PTSD mm -hmm. or CPTSD. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously you're getting traumatic stuff, so mm -hmm. you're most likely gonna be diagnosed with that as well. Um, I have a ma major depression disorder, mm -hmm. uh, and my psychiatrist says it's with mixed features. Basically to explain that is, I don't have bipolar disorder, but mm -hmm. I have some traits mm -hmm. of bipolar disorder, just not enough to be considered bipolar. I understand that. Um, so, I have OCD, I have PMDD, um, God, I think there's some more. And I know you're struggling right now. Yeah. And we'll oh, talk anxiety about- Anxiety as well. <laughs> anxiety, yes. And we'll talk about that in as much detail or as mm -hmm. little detail as you want later. Mm -hmm. But do you want to give the viewers a sense of what you've been going through? Um, so my depression has been really, really, really active mm -hmm. lately. Um, I'm like struggling with it pretty bad for a while. Like I wasn't able to see my psychiatrist mm -hmm. to change my meds. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what we're working through right now is finding a medication that works. Mm -hmm. um, whew, sorry. Take your time. It's just been a real struggle. So mm -hmm. um, I ended up actually taking myself because um, I, I needed help. I mm -hmm. was like, I am having a hard time. I am, I have like suicide ideation every day. Mm. Um, so I took myself to an inpatient treatment center. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously I was really scared to do that, but I felt like it was necessary and I'm just so desperate for help mm -hmm. that I felt like it was a, a very important thing to do. Mm -hmm. I commend you on that choice. I don't think most people would have the courage to do that. It's scary. <laughs> yeah. It's scary. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And uh, of course, you're, you only share the stuff you want to share. Yeah. Only say the things you want to say. This is your time to do as much or as little as you want to do. And I feel like if I can help other people, mm -hmm. I, I'm i willing to like bear my soul. Like yeah. if I can help somebody else because yeah. I feel like I struggle so much. Yeah. And I'm desperately searching for that, that answer, that help. Yeah. Well, as you help other people, know that the Med Circle team and myself will help you as much as we can. Thank you.
Thanks for watching. Your next step is to go to medcircle.com and finish watching this series. There you can also access other series and get actionable advice and simple explanations. Continue your mental health journey at medcircle.com and I'll see you there.